So let's take a look at formal charge today and how to calculate it. Um, so when we're doing formal charge, the actual formula that we're doing is we're looking at the periodic table and we're figuring out how many valence electrons an atom should have. And then from that, we're going to look at our structure and subtract out how many valence electrons we've actually given it that it owns in the structure. And when I say owns, it's really the valence electrons that I've attached to it in the structure. Um, so let's look at the carbon in this structure that is drawn. Um, according to the periodic table, if I look at where the carbon is, it should own four valence electrons. Let's see how many I gave it owning in the structure. Um, in the structure, the carbon is, has four bonds. Now, we ordinarily think of bonds as a pair or two shared electrons. But in the bond, one of the electrons is coming from one atom and the other is coming from the other atom. So, for instance, the carbon in each of these bonds owns one valence electron. The other valence electron is actually coming um, from the oxygen. So that's why I say when you think of owning, you can kind of think as to what's attached to it, um, where each bond is really only going to count as one. So the carbon owns one, two, three, four valence electrons in this structure. It should own four, um, so that gives it a formal charge of zero. It has the correct number that it should have. If I'm doing the oxygens on the outside, um, let's do the same thing. So if I look up oxygen, each oxygen should own six valence electrons. Let's start with the one on top. So each car, um, oxygen should own six. Let's see how many it actually has in the structure. One, two, three, four, and from each bond, it owns one, so there is six. There's actually one from each of the bonds it owns. The other is being shared by the carbon. Um, so this give it a formal charge of zero for the top one. Let's look at the ones on the bottom. Again, each oxygen should own six. Let's see how many I gave it owning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this oxygen has a formal charge of minus one. Same with this other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should have six. It has seven. It has a minus one. Now, if I look at the total charge on the structure, there's a minus two charge on the whole structure. So when I add up all my formal charges, they should add up to minus two, and they do. Zero plus zero plus negative one plus negative one gives me a negative two. Um, when I'm drawing a structure, I usually want to make sure I have formal charges as close to zero as possible, but if I have a charge on the whole structure, I'll never get all zeros. Also, I want to make sure that if I have negative formal charges, they're on things that are more electronegative. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so having negative one charges on those is a good idea. Now, um, I know the equation says should minus owns or should minus what's attached to it, um, but a lot of times when I'm doing this, I don't really think of um, which way I'm subtracting because sometimes people forget what I'm subtracting from what. I just end up seeing, um, like, so for instance, for the bottom oxygens, there's one more electron around it than it should. It should have six. Um, it has seven, so it's going to have a minus one charge. Um, same for the other one. So I like to see if there's more electrons, negative, because we're used to if something gains electrons, it's negative, and if it has less electrons around it, it's positive. Let's look at another example. Um, so let's look at BF3. So again, it's how many valence electrons something should have minus how many um, it's actually given in the structure. So the boron, if we look it up, it should have three. In the structure, I gave it one, two, three. It owns three. Though it's sharing more, it owns actually three of them. Um, so that gives boron a formal charge of zero. Let's look at each fluorine. Each fluorine owns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it should own seven, so each fluorine has a formal charge of zero. These are all zeros, which add up to zero, and that's the charge on the whole structure. It's a neutral molecule. Now, if I notice, this is actually an exception to the octet rule. Normally, um, or often, things bond to get eight valence electrons. If I count each bond as two now, because 
Not only will boron own one, it'll share another in each of those bonds. There's two, four, six valence electrons around boron total, right? Including what's shared. Um, so it owns three. It's sharing a total of six. Um, that's actually breaking the octet rule. And you'll notice that for boron and beryllium, um, things with two or three valence electrons, this is often going to be the case because it reduces the formal charge. Um, let's look at another. Um, here, I gave two different models of the same kind of um, same number of atoms. So I have PCl3O. Um, let's see which might be a better structure. Um, so for the phosphorus, let's do the phosphorus on each um, structure. So if I look at phosphorus, it should own five valence electrons. In the first structure, it owns one, two, three, four has one less than it should, so that's a plus one on that phosphorus. In the other structure, should own five, and I gave it owning one, two, three, four, five, so it has a formal charge of zero. Already the one on the right is looking better. Um, if I look at each of the chlorines, the chlorine in every single structure is the same. It should own seven, and it does own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's zero. All these chlorines are zero. And let's look at the oxygens. So on the first structure, oxygen should own six, and it owns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one more around it than it should, so it's a negative one. And in the other structure, it should own six, but it owns uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it has a zero. Um, notice the one on the right has less formal charges than the one on the left. Though they both all add up to zero, the one on the right is a better structure. And I actually, if I count the number of valence electrons total around that phosphorus, there's two, four, six, eight, ten valence electrons. It's actually breaking the octet rule. But for things that are in the third row or lower, you can actually do that for because you have d orbitals available, um, so you have more space for your bonding electrons. So this is a lesson on formal charge, and this should help you to calculate formal charges in your structure and also to check if your structure um, is the best structure possible.